Hi everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm going through the K-1 process to marry my fiance in the U.S. and have him come over on the K-1 visa. I wanted to make this video because I thought the process was pretty hard and very time consuming, so I wanted to make it easier for people. As a note, my fiance is from the UK, so this could be applicable to other countries, but mine is going to be UK specific. I am a US citizen who is living in the US right now, and I want to bring over my fiance who lives in the UK so that we can get married in the US and then he can file for an adjustment of status. So for my submission for my I-129F application, I basically made a cover letter and I can put on a boilerplate version in the link below I'll have a link to a cover letter like mine and I basically put my address USCIS attention I-129F and I put the original submission I-129F petition for fian alien fiance I put myself as a petitioner and my fiance as the beneficiary. And then I made a table of contents, basically. So I said the following documents accompany and support this petition. One, a check for the amount of $535 to cover the filing fee. I don't know if that's going to change, so you should look on the USCIS website. And they have a calculator that can calculate the amount because I know that different administrations could make it more money for bringing over your fiance to get married. Then I have as my number two, the form G1145 E notification for application petition acceptance. This is just like, so you can find out through, I guess, email or texting. Then I have the actual form I-129F petition for alien fiance. It's 13 pages and it asks you mostly questions about yourself, your fiance, your parents, your fiance's parents, and it has other sections for if you have an interpreter or if you had a preparer. But basically, as long as you know where you've lived for the past five years, where you've worked for the past five years, and what your fiance does as an occupation, it should be pretty straightforward. You just have to make sure the information is correct. And if you make a mistake, they tell you don't use white out, don't cross it out, just print out a new page, which is annoying, but it's something I guess you have to do, right? So I had my petition for my alien fiance. Then I had Additional information for my form I-129F as my bullet point for. Basically, I've lived in a lot of different places in the U.S. Um, for short-term job assignments. So I put those down because I was still a resident of those states. And then I also, because I had those job assignments, I also put them down in my employment history but you may have additional information for other questions on the form. Then I had my birth certificate, my U.S. birth certificate. They want copies, not the original um, birth certificate. So make sure you don't send in your original birth certificate. Make sure you make a copy and put it in. And then I also made passport style photos of me and my fiance. Basically, they're like... $15 to print out at CVS, but my fiance did basically like cropped photos that we had taken of ourselves and put them in a template that made them two by two, but print out on a four by six. So we had six pictures and I just cut them and I put two of them in a plastic bag. So that part... So what I did was I took a blank page and I put in a plastic bag, I clipped it with a binder clip and basically I wrote passport style photos of me and my fiance's name as well for that step. 
and then I had a declaration of intent to marry within 90 days. I wrote one and my fiance wrote one and we both signed and dated it and then printed our names and I can have a link to that as well down below. It's just boilerplate language that we used. And then I have to further prove my intent to marry, I have a receipt for my wedding gown. And then I also have a description of all of the times we met in person. I think this was the longest step, but I can put a link to maybe a PDF or something that I did. Basically, I wrote my name at the top of every page because they tell you to write your name on your attachments. So I wrote the name, my name on the top of every page and I said description of in-person meetings over the last two years. So I would have a header like my fiance visits me in Atlanta, Georgia, but I used our names. And then I have the date February 5th to February 26, 2020. And then if need be, I have a little description. So I would say my fiance came to visit me in Georgia and proposed to me on February 23rd with a diamond ring. Included evidence. Page 36, picture of me wearing my engagement ring. Page 36 through 42, airline e-ticket receipt. For another one, I've got, I visit my fiance in England and we take a trip to Belgium. We then go back to England, then I fly home. I have the date, December 26, 2019 to January 3rd, 2020. Then I have where we were, so I put a bullet for England and the dates that we were there, December 26th to the 30th and then January 4th. And then I've got Belgium, the cities that we went to, Brussels, Ghent, and Bruges from the 31st of December to January 3rd. Then I have included evidence Page 9, a scan of my passport entrance to leave London and enter the Schengen area, center left. So I put where it was on the passport because I've got a lot of stamps on my passport. And then I have page 11, scan of my passport exit stamp for Belgium, bottom right of the fold, and a picture of my fiancé and me in Bruges. So I've got that going for two years. We see each other quite frequently, so it was a lot of effort to gather what we use for evidence were some pictures. I used pictures where you could tell where we were. So we went to Peru and Machu Picchu. So I had a picture of us at the Machu Picchu ruins, but I didn't, there was only a couple pictures where you couldn't identify where we were, like the restaurant. I put it in there because I had my engagement ring on, but for most of my pictures, I put it so that people could see, oh yeah, they were actually in that city. Like we went to the US Open you can pretty much tell from the stadium that you're in New York. And then the best pieces of evidence are going to be your passport stamps. My fiance was an interesting case because he has global entry. So he doesn't always get a passport stamp. So I put that in there as a note just to say he's not always going to have a passport stamp because he has global entry. I put everything single-sided because they ask you to put everything single-sided and the strength of my evidence is probably one passport stamps, two airline tickets and bookings, and three pictures. We have maybe nine pictures out of the many instances that we've seen each other, maybe less than nine as well. I'm not entirely sure. And then the way that I organized it, they ask you to do it single-sided, like I said before. And then I put my name on every page and then the actual page number right there. So you can see like my name's above and then every page I hand labeled. I'm sure you could do different things, but that's what I did. And then I dated 
my sticky notes. So I have sticky notes at the bottom because they tell you not to put them on the sides. And basically I said my fiance's full name, what the evidence was. So in one of my sticky notes, it's an e-ticket receipt. Then I have the dates like December 3rd, 2019 to December 20, 2019. And then I have where he went. So London to Los Angeles to Atlanta to London. So that's all the evidence for those tickets and whatnot. And just to note, there are different addresses if you use a courier like FedEx, UPS, or DHL versus the United States Postal Service. But just be aware that if you use a private courier, then you have to use the proper address. And then if you use the US Postal Service, then there's another address for that that's separate from the private couriers. Okay. Um, Hopefully everything goes well with my petition. I'll give any updates and whatnot, but round one, here I come.